Hey everybody, it's Magus. Welcome back for the May 2022 Tesla Solar Panels and Powerwalls monthly update. I'm really sorry for how late the video is uh, this month. Life got in the way, ended up getting a new laptop, going back to work. Um, so, so sorry it came out so late here. Gonna have the May update, the June update, and a six month review of the system coming out here. Uh, so again, apologize it was such a delay here. Hopefully we'll have a couple videos coming out real soon for you. Um, Anyways, this month, uh, things going on, some housekeeping. Did have a power outage. Uh, my parents were here for it. Power went out while they were microwaving something uh, in the neighborhood, uh, came back on, and then actually went back off again, and then came back on. Um, so the power walls didn't stop the power from going out, uh, but you know, at least the power came back, nothing to worry about. Um, a couple other things are we did have two updates. The most recent updates uh, occur during production times. Um, it was right about noon, so almost peak production. It's kind of annoying. I wish they would run during the nighttime, you know, or during maybe early day if they have to run during production. But, you know, right at noon, you lose, you know, a kilowatt or two of production over 10 to 15 minutes. Kind of frustrating, not a big deal, but just something hopefully that changes. Uh, the other thing is that the Stormwatch function I talked about, you know, a couple months ago uh, has been popping up occasionally. We're getting the red flag warnings here. It's, you know, really hot over 100 degrees and gets really windy. Um, again, these don't really knock our power out. Um, but what I've noticed is that if I don't see the notification on my phone, that it just starts drawing from the grid, um, which I really am trying to avoid. Again, not a big deal, but I've gone four or five months here without touching the grid. So, um, you know, when I can avoid using it, I do. Uh, maybe something in the future would be nice is if we could turn off Stormwatch for just red flag warnings or, you know, maybe a specific type of event. Um, Going forward, I think that'd be a cool idea, but you know, nothing too important. Uh, anyways, uh, as always, if you'd like to get a system here, you can self-refer yourself with your own referral code if you have a Tesla vehicle. Otherwise, look down below in the comments. You can use mine. I think it's $300 off uh, for either the solar roof or the solar panels now. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments for me. And as always, please subscribe, hit like, and let's take a look at the data. So as the summer starts here, you can see uh, our house usage has gone up by about 50% from April to May. Uh, we're starting to use the AC in earnest. It's you know getting into the 80s and 90s now. We had maybe one or two days in the hundreds. The AC is set to 72 degrees. We have a 2,000 square foot house. Um, it's not running all the time just yet, but it's running quite a bit more than it was you know in April. Um, as you can see, we do have a, a pretty high day here of 86.6 kilowatt hours. That was charging the car, and I'm pretty sure it was like 100 degrees. Um, that's pretty much the only day, I think, where we used more than the solar produced, uh, which is pretty impressive. Uh, didn't use the grid uh, at all, though. Um, but what you can see here is with the uh, production, it also went up quite a bit. We, we averaged 65.4 kilowatt hours in April, and that went all the way up about 10 kilowatt hours to 75.8 in May. We did have a couple duds in April that lowered that average. There were a few, uh, you know, more cloudy days in May, but, you know, it just kind of kept on going up and up and up. Our high was 86 kilowatt hours, uh, up from 77.7 .7 in April. It really will be interesting to see if we hit 90 kilowatt hours in June. I think it's going to get too hot to do that, but uh, I guess we'll see. Here you can see the Powerwall discharge info for the month. Uh, we're still only using about half of our Powerwall's capacity, 20 kilowatt hours on average in May, a little bit more than in April. Uh, you know, it's just a little bit more AC usage overnight. Uh, it's also running the dishwasher, maybe running a loader to a laundry, um, you know, after the sun goes down. Still not using all of our capacity, which is something I'll talk about a little bit later. I think we're going to be a really good candidate for Tesla's virtual power plant system. Uh, I'll talk about that in a video coming up here. Uh, it seems like they're putting out more details. Looks like $2 a kilowatt hour back to the grid, so that should be interesting. 
And here's my favorite graph of them all. In April, we gave back about 850 kilowatt hours to the grid. In May, a little bit less actually, just a little hair over 800 kilowatt hours. You can see that little blip of green. That's that storm watch mode uh, event that I didn't catch a notification for. We did use a little bit from the grid, so that broke our streak of four or five months. It wasn't too happy about that, but oh well. Um, I attribute the less going back to the grid just to the AC being used more. It's getting hotter and uh, completely normal. We're still very, very net negative when it comes to our uh, true up bill for the, uh, for the year. Uh, again, if you have any questions, comments, or would like to see anything, let me know. And I uh, hope you enjoyed these videos. See you next month.